Today on Homeworthy, you'll discover one of the most brilliant villa renovations in the Mediterranean. Its owner, John Moslet, transformed a crumbling winery into one of Italy's most glamorous vacation villas. Befitted with an infinity pool, clay tennis court, and state-of-the-art Italian kitchen. So step inside to discover the height of Sicilian living, with a special thanks to our partner, The Thinking Traveler. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hello, Homeworthy. I'm John. Welcome to Rocca delle Tre Contrade, my home in Sicily. Come on in. I'm John Moslet. This is Rocca delle Tre Contrade. It's my villa in Sicily and uh, I've owned it now for about 20 years. We bought it as a ruin. Uh, you could actually see the sky from in here. Um, there were trees growing inside and it took us about four years to completely restore, to bring it back to its beauty as it is today. We found this place just by a coincidence. Um, literally, we were in the area, looking around, driving on the country roads, and we spotted it, and there was nobody here, so we just jumped the fence uh, to have a look inside, and it was love at first sight. Right here, where we are now, it was an empty, huge space. It was a production space. This is where they used to make wine. Uh, so you can just imagine very empty, dirty, uh, abandoned equipment. Literally, this was just a crumbling old house. I thought when I saw this, I need this, I want this. This is something that has so much potential uh, and could come back and become something beautiful again. Obviously, at that point, we had no idea who the owner was. It probably wasn't even for sale. And we had to do all the research, find out who the owner was. Then when we found this person, uh, we had to negotiate the price. And this whole process took about two years to find the owner, negotiate the price, and to, before we even had started building. The first thing we had to do when we finally managed to buy this property was to find a local architect. And I think that is, was crucial. Uh, to find a local person who could deal with all the bureaucracy, to get us the building permits, to find the right contractor to do the work, the right people with the skills that were needed, because we wanted to restore this place. We wanted to use original materials, old-fashioned techniques, to really make sure that we preserved what we had found. We think this house was built around 1850. We know it was probably built by an aristocratic family who lived nearby, uh, but who came here only during the summer or during the harvest, because this was a wine producing estate to begin with. So they had a, an apartment upstairs on the main floor. Down here there was wine production. And now we've converted it into a 12 bedroom property with ensuite bathrooms. This is now a living area with big comfortable uh, sofas and a lot of space to relax. So like right up here behind me, up on the mezzanine, that's where the grapes used to be crushed. And uh, the wine, the grape juices would come out of the small wall, a small hole in the wall over there and into big vats where the wine was fermenting. So I live in a winery, <laughs> except the fact that probably 50 or 60 years ago when this building was abandoned, the vineyards were taken out and they planted lemon trees instead. So now I live in the, in the middle of a lemon farm. So what struck us the most when we found this place was its position high up on its own little hill with an amazing panorama overlooking the Mediterranean Sea on one side and Mount Etna on the other side. Rocca delle Tre Contrade literally means rocca, means rock, and Tre Contrade are like three hamlets so it's the rock of the three hamlets. Rocca delle tre contrade. So 
So doing up is such a big place, and especially come when it comes to the interiors, was a pretty daunting uh, prospect. Um, I got some really good advice uh, along the way, and someone told me not to plan things too much, but to just pick individual pieces that I like, and in the end, they would all fit together by themselves. That's probably the best advice I got in terms of how to approach the interiors. And uh, we've chosen a very informal style. I'm Norwegian originally, and so uh, we've mixed the lightness of the Scandinavia and the north with uh, you know, the ambience and the feeling of a southern or a Sicilian home. So I'm going to show you some of the pieces and talk about a little bit about the choices that we made. Uh, so for instance, here in the living room, there were no, uh, this was, as I said before, this was a production uh, environment. So there were no fireplaces. Um, so we just happened across in the flea markets to find these old, these are actually parts of an old door, door frame. And so we adapted them and they become, we have two fireplaces like this. And this table is made from the original wooden doors, actually, that we found here. So these are uh, almost 200-year-old doors that were the shutters on this floor. And this really, really tall lamp, it's uh, by a young designer in Milan called Davide Groppi. It's made of the same materials as a fishing rod, and it gives an amazing light. It fills the space. I love to collect books, so every, every time I'm in a bookshop or a second-hand bookshop, I buy uh, books and we've, we try to fill up the bookshelves here, the, the bedrooms, uh, with interesting books about Sicily, um, about history and about art. And actually, this is the original flooring as well. And as you can tell, it's uh, lava stone, which is essentially the most common building material in this area seeing that we're on a volcano. And there are lava blocks about this thick, and we had to take them all out. We had to dig down to put air ventilation underneath, and then we put them back. So as soon as we started building, and that it took four years, we also started collecting furniture. And uh, these are some, this is one of the antique uh, armoires that we found, and we turned it into a bar. Well, here uh, our guests can help themselves to uh, make a cocktail uh, or some of the staff will make a cocktail for them. Um, up here I have a collection of vintage, vintage vermouth bottles from the 50s and 60s that we actually use in the cocktails. The drink of choice, there's not really a drink of choice, but we like to make an Etna spritz. Uh, so it's a variation of the classic spritz, but with an Etna bitter. Otherwise, you know, people like to have a gin and tonic and they like to go and pick a lemon uh, from the lemon grove and use it in their gin and tonic. Negronis are very popular, that's my favorite, a Negroni. And uh, for that, obviously, I use my vintage vermouth. This is great because it stays closed during the day, the daytime. And then towards seven o'clock in the evening, before the aperitif, we open it up and people really enjoy it. This is part of the wine press. So it's actually used as a weight to weigh down when they were pressing the grape skin to get the last drops of wine or last drops of juice out of the grapes. So this probably weighs about a, two tons. We've left it as an architectural piece. Uh, some important pieces were missing and we, they weren't here when we got here, but, so, but this is, they couldn't take this one away, so this one has remained. I'm gonna take you upstairs now to the main floor where the, the aristocratic family who, built this uh, property where they had their apartment. So this is one of my favorite bedrooms. It's a corner bedroom with the full views of the Mediterranean. And actually here we have the original terracotta floor tiles, which we picked up one by one, cleaned them and put them back. The walls, which are, it's plaster made from white sand and we also re rebuilt the original vaulted ceilings. And big ensuite bathrooms, in this case we have a big bathtub, huge showers with lava stone splashbacks and stone sinks made from local stone. And I'll take you onto the terrace and the views are across the Mediterranean. The doors aren't the original ones but we actually made them um, 
according to the design of the original doors. And here we can see across to Taormina on that side. Normally we can see the heel of Italy across the sea over there and south towards Catania in this direction. The external plaster as well on the facade um, is the original color. This color is derived from the red earth underneath the lava flows that people would dig out and it was red and it would be blended into the plaster to create the pink color. And this is the original limestone details that we haven't even touched. Some of the most rewarding things about bringing something like this back to life has been seeing guests enjoy it as if it were their home. But I think there's another thing as well that I sh I'd, li I'd like to mention, and it's the staff. Um, I think Sicilians in general don't see the beauty of what they have around them. And I know that for our staff, it's been an eye-opener to see something that's being brought back into life in their own area and that they can actually have beauty uh, and something created and brought back to life like this um, that they didn't even realize was possible. This is the orange blossom. We're right at the end of the orange blossom season. So this is where our fava beans grow. And here we have peas. And more fava beans. Yeah, let's, uh, we'll try and find some lemons. These are actually quite small still because uh, these are next year's, uh, or this summer's harvest. So these will be harvested in July. We actually harvest uh, lemons three times per year. So it's a very productive plant in January, July, and then in September. We're really lucky that we're in the middle of greenery. Everywhere you can see there's green, there are lemon groves. And we're very proud of our pine tree, actually. Every Sicilian country house should have its own pine tree. And uh, this is pretty spectacular because we're right up at the top of the tree, but it actually grows from down below this wall here. And this is an amazing lava bench that runs all the way along our terrace here. And it's perfect for sitting on, watching the sunset across Etna. This is Nuvola, by the way. This is one of our dogs. Nuvola is cloud in Italian. So when we plant the garden, we, uh, we're very conscious of using only plants that are from the Mediterranean that are drought resistant, that don't need a, a lot of water. So we have Fica India, which are prickly pear cacti. And we have Phoenix palm trees here that will, in a hundred years time, they'll be growing past the roof here. And I'm gonna take you across our amazing bridge, which probably was the original walkway or entrance into the property. And below here, we've built our pool, our um, infinity L-shaped pool, which right now is ref reflecting the afternoon sunlight. So here we'll be able to see our whole uh, property. On our grounds, we have lemon trees, we have orange trees, we have cherry trees, apricots, peach, and we have our own vegetable plots where we grow peas and fava beans, tomatoes all summer, and we have our own herb garden where we get fresh rosemary, um, thyme and oregano, for instance, for the kitchen. And I think the, what I love most about this property and this home is what you see right behind me here, the view of the sea behind the house and the colors of the facade and just the position here with this bridge leading up to our dream villa. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.